Well, price fixing has always been. Maybe this is no different yeah. than when they were shaving points on basketball games. But now you got the Fed. You can juice Look, more money in the system and take it right out. Well, exactly. And But they've been doing that with gold actually since the very beginning because gold and silver are real money. And if people actually understood that, I mean, what happened in the 70s? One of the things that you talked about that I like is how history, you know, parallels, right? So let's talk about that for a minute because really we had the roaring 20s. Every time you transition into a new monetary system and into a new currency system, you got a big boom. So people are paying attention to the boom times and not to what's actually happened. The roaring 20s the greedy 80s, and we've got the Roaring Twenties again. And what, uh, what was it that the uh, Roaring Twenties, that was just because people were excited. It had nothing to do with the Fed's policy then, right? Oh, I had it, uh, right. We were turning Probably into a, a consumer-driven... and they were printing like, money, and all, then they exactly. the money, and it collapsed. Likely also a coincidence that the dot-com bubble Credit. collapsed when it did. For that, the housing bubble started collapsing right after Greenspan tried to unjack us from the 1% interest rates. We saw how that worked out. So now what's going to happen after a decade of 0% plus QE? Gee. And, you know, the question is, is the Fed losing control? Because the Fed has control of the, it's the confidence that's keeping this game going. Could it be the exchange stabilization fund that has the control? Or oh, maybe, yeah. Uh, it seems oh. like the Fed's like been control. letting it slip a little bit lately. And yeah the interest rates and actually oh i had a question again <laughs> it's flying around in my flying saucer so i didn't get to check the news on this one but i remember uh, janet yelling mouthing off last week about how well we might have to raise interest rates uh -huh. and, then... and then the employment <laughs> thing got clobbered although i said it was bullshit when she first said it maybe i got lucky again that's usually what happens when i get these things right <laughs> But okay, so is now she going to retract that, or was that another headline because of the prices here on something? We learned this trick from the trade war. Trade war on goes here. Trade war off. This price actually didn't move, but if you know that customers are stopped out, especially if you're a fraudulent mm -hmm. bank, like when I went to Wharton and they all came to recruit and they're like, oh, these trading desks, oh, this, uh, put up the customer order flow. And we all went there because we knew we could be like a hedge fund on a right. bank desk. And, uh, because if you get it up and you get it down and you know where the stops are placed, you can screw your customers routinely, as the CFTC noted about J.P. Morgan. Right. Now let's give them credit. It wasn't just the metals market. They were right there was the everything. Too. It's true. It's true. So, but at what point, what, what does one have to do to actually get banned from the markets? Do they have to, like, shoot one of the exchange officials on TV they have to murder no. an anchor during the middle of an interview. Like what? No, I don't what think is, what so. What is the threshold before you, you lose the opportunity to play? I don't know. Maybe let's say you're actually transparent, and then you would lose that opportunity to play. So as long as you keep lying, you can do a John Corzine, start a new hedge fund, exactly, and be rewarded. Exactly. Archegos, right? Turns out the Credit Suisse didn't lose two billion. That number keeps going bigger and bigger. Well, I don't think that's over yet either. But it really all goes back to don't derivatives. So they were mixed up in that one too, and those are probably unconnected. I'm sure they gave the full amount oh, of the loss. And yeah, I'm sure. But you know, I mean, really, I think the biggest threat is the derivatives market you know, the speculative derivatives market and people don't, you know, do they really ever talk about it? No, not really. Well, not true because I think Rusty was, I think that's what he was talking about. He said it was the structure, the future market that's, structure that acted to tamp down the price. And then I had my socks blown off last week when I'm there. <laughs> they have a five hour CFTC podcast. I've only made it through the first half hour. It was interesting because Ross starts talking about, he's like, and I'd like to thank, you know, the subcommittee of this and that, and, uh, you know, and the Alicia Creighton of uh, the futures market <laughs> this, and then the prime brokerage of Goldman Sachs. Yeah, really. 
So the market structure that bailed out Goldman Sachs was set by Goldman Sachs. Sachs. Oh, Ross shocker. Bennett is answering to subcommittees chaired by prime brokerage and future market panels of Goldman Sachs. And then here's another whopper. Someone uh, actually told me, reporter from CNBC, who I might add is aware of this information. So there's more people finding out mm -hmm. about the fraud that's been going on. And I'm not sure it's going to just get the right person or the right investor. She mentioned that he was actually speaking again yesterday. So here's Ross. Now, I ask, hey, have you guys looked at the evidence I sent? All I hear is, oh, it's too, it's too confidential. Yeah, he can go run his mouth on the Boca Raton Futures Industry Conference and talk about this. That's not affecting the investigation. So uh, which is it? Is it? Uh, and then and then he, he mentioned who, who he's answering from. Yeah. And then this thing where he spoke yesterday on Monday. Well, I wanted to go watch because he had a 20 minute speech. I wondered if he was going to comment on. Because this isn't just me, Lynette. Look, look right. at anyone watching home. Look at Benham's Twitter feed. Look at any of the commissioners. See what happens anytime they tweet now. And there's like hundreds of people telling them to go stick it. Why don't you actually regulate this stuff? I don't know. The guy's busy with climate change. Talks about regulating the derivatives markets. Never says anything about the underlying commodity. And then we find out. You know, he's, he's answering to Goldman Sachs. So, I mean, it's pro I mean, I would imagine he's a lawyer. I would say it's pretty would be pretty darn wise for his own best interest to stay quiet unless he can somehow explain that. Because what I, I find intriguing is that, at least from what I've seen, there are two choices. Either A, he can talk and release more evidence that could be used against him. Right. Or he can stay silent. So and then the market is, from what I'm seeing, is, is noticing, and I do not see that changing. I don't plan to stop exposing right. either. So is that what your lawsuit is about? You want to talk about that a bit? Um, sure. Because I donated, I donated well, to I it. Well, I sure appreciate that. Because um, we've got to. We've got to come <laughs> together as a community and support each other and support each other, you know, getting the truth out there. So why don't you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, well, actually, the way that was set up, uh, Lynette, do you actually remember Bob Murphy, the great Austrian who uh, put his foot down to Paul Krugman about 10 years ago? Yes, I think I do. That, I was walking around uh, Las Vegas about a month ago, and I was thinking about that and the CFTC, because what Bob Murphy, uh, Mises Institute scholar, great uh, free market Austrian economist, uh, too honest for government, of course. Mm-hmm. He set up this thing because you have Paul Krugman and his Nobel Prize who says a lot of silly things that cost people a lot of money and is the kind of person that allows all of the fraud that we've been discussing, right. people to fall for it. So Bob set out a campaign where people could pledge money and it would go to charity as long as Krugman just showed up and explained why we're all morons and conspiracy theorists just to explain his comments. Hey, and it was up to hundred grand. Would have gone to like a food bank. But Paul, the uh, noble patriot that he is, was too busy. So hey, I don't know the man's schedule. Just reporting what happened. But I was thinking about that. I was like, how could I use this concept for the CFTC? And I did a little tweak where you know I explained the issues that I thought were going on and said, all right, people can pledge money. I've, been, I've tried to be fair. Hey, maybe there's some explanation that I don't know. And if he just answers the questions that his constituents mm -hmm. email me because they can't get an answer from them, then the money was going to go to the victims of, I keep hearing of the horrific child trafficking that's going on. And certainly if there's some people who could use some assistance, I would think, think they're right. on the list there. And certainly yeah, that would, would be so. something that if he's just honoring the transparency he talks about anybody would have, would have supported the deadline has come and passed for that and the that was uh, friday wasn't it that was last friday and as that passed now the money will be used for legal action against the cftc i'm not sure specifically what that will be although one of the things i'm excited about is now i have volunteer teams for a lot of these things i used to do by myself mm-hmm 
So for example, we have a couple, and these aren't high school kids, these are fund managers, successful business owners, mining stock investors, some of whom have been involved in legal suits already. Well, Matt, did you, uh, do you know who Daniel Shack is? No. Would you like to? I would, I'd yeah, love to, would. yeah. Daniel Shack is a hedge fund guy, I believe also a poker player. The folks, Google Daniel Shack, JP Morgan, CNBC, you'll find some articles written by Don Geal that talk about how Daniel Shack had brought a suit against JP Morgan, claiming they manipulated the price. It was basically thrown out. But then, I know it's going to be hard to believe, but a couple of years later when JP Morgan got caught lying, I go figure. No, I can't imagine they would lie to us. Daniel Shack's lawyer, David Covell, said something. David Morgan wrote him a check. And then it got quiet? Well, I'm in the process of finding out and some of these great, talented people that... I have lawyers who volunteer their time for free. Nice. Is that a magic trick there? I mean, That's a magic trick. The CFTC can't get their, <laughs> uh, their lawyers for free. But it's amazing when... Uh, you just get like all the people who are ready for something just a little maybe that's what leadership is not rigging markets and lying about it right but now it's it's cool because i mentioned this i sent the link to them I'm like hey we should get in contact with this guy because I've, I've reached out to him before having and like sometimes you just need some persistence right and if you have hundreds of people who care who that ca are sending right. emails every day they're making these calls and can let go of you know they answered they didn't answer being success or failure no no I applaud anyone who picks up a phone or, or shares a video or, or tells their their neighbor. Right. That's the success because it doesn't, you throw enough darts at the board, one of them hits it, and it's a collective win, not the guy who. Yeah. So now it's great. These guys actually, they're uh, going to be reaching out. They're having a meeting again tonight. That, I wonder how the banks are going to defend against that. But the fact that I've gotten so many emails from people who are saying, why isn't there some sort of physical index? Why are we benchmarking right. from a fraudulent index where nobody can get silver anyway? Or gold, really. I mean, the when you're in the physical markets, there's a finite amount. I don't really care what it is. So maybe and we have increased premiums. People can't get metal in many situations. Exactly. What is the point of this? But fortunately, there are people now... I don't know how many people know this, but a physical index that is including the different bullion dealers. Actually, I'm sure he'd love to get in touch with you if he hasn't already. He's talking with the mining companies. Why are, why are the mining companies getting fleeced with a little shakedown fee to the COMEX? Right. And if you think the COMEX is the only racket, of course it's not. No, fact, it's not. I got one that's going to make you smile. Do you know what happens if you have sizable amount of money in a JP Morgan bank account and their greedy little bankers see that, you know, they can't resist getting their cut. Yeah, you gotta feed the beast is the right. some basis points here. So if they call you and they're like, oh we got this, we got that, we got you can come in, we got so many great products for you. So let's say you're in that situation, you finally say, alright, I'll hear what these bozos have to say and you walk in and you say, alright, Actually, I'll tell you what, there is something I'm interested in. I'd like to take 50,000 shares of SLV and redeem them. What do you think they say? Do you think they say, yes, ma'am, yes, sir, I'll be right to it? Oh, well, you can't redeem them because you're not an authorized participant. No, but J.P. Morgan is. Yes, J.P. Morgan there, is. They, why they're gonna, and since they serve the customer, would you believe they would give you a lot of resistance Yes, I will believe that. A couple that. days later, the next thing you hear with that explanation is they just closed your account. Jamie? <laughs> live? Any comment? Should we wait? No, I think we'll get dead silence on that. Okay. Do the fish know? The fish know. The ducks know. That's why they're quacking. They're quacking up. That's Ooh, a bad joke. <laughs> well, I'll tell you who does seem to be knowing. And you seem to get it. I know a lot of people come to you, people who don't like getting stolen from. They exactly. Come to like you. I've heard from a lot of people who 
find it disgusting. Uh, get it emails is when they send it to their congressmen and get some. All the different people are sending things different places, and I think the investors. What what. What can someone say if they know about this? I've yet to find someone who's heard any, even a part of this, mm -hmm. and says, oh, let me get some SLV. Isn't that amazing? I mean, I've been talking about SLV and GLD since it came out, because it's just designed to mimic the manipulated spot. Mm -hmm. And you're right. There's no way. You, you cannot get your hands on the physical underline. They may not have it. They say they have it, but like you were talking about earlier, the auditing. Where's the auditing of this? I mean, you can see the fees coming out. They'll show you that. You know, last time anyone besides J.P. Morgan's put their name to the SLV Trust? No. What I told you... Well, that was... Well, go ahead. Go ahead. Because that was what I was able... I was able to get an inspection letter, not the audit. It's funny, the, the third time I called, I'm saying, I'm looking for the audit. They're like, oh, I think there's some, there's like a paragraph on the 10K here. Mentions like something about PricewaterhouseCoopers and an audit committee. They're like, is that what you're looking for? Like, no, I was actually looking for the audit. They, they didn't even know what an audit is. <laughs> Jeez. And if they don't even know what an audit is or can't find it, does that mean that when they sold 118 million shares over three days, I'm guessing nobody else asked for I'm it. pretty sure that's true. Because people just, it's, it's all about perception management. If they can manage how you perceive things, then you move in the direction that they want you to move in. But you know, I mean, I've watched your work. We're sitting here talking, but I have to ask you a personal question. Please, please. Okay. Why do you do what you do? Well, I mean, I guess, uh, I don't know, I was trading options in my 20s. I'm like, how much longer is this going to be here? And... I don't know, maybe there's only so much of uh, one's life that's worth devoting to Wall Street and... Right. I don't know, or maybe the answer is that is just, just disgusting. What's happening. I don't know, and it's... Uh, I don't know, maybe there's some of us left who believe in doing things with honesty and integrity and... For whatever reason, I, I've wondered before, like, why, why was I able to see this as opposed to the next guy on me on Wall Street? Why is one person able to see it? Um, but it, it, I don't know, there's someone out there who can, you, you stand up to it and right. for the people that don't understand it, I mean, hey, for the same reason I'm grateful when if I have something wrong with my car, if I have someone I trust, because, hey, if the guy tells me my rotator and this and that, how the heck am I going to know? Right. And that's how so much of this has been perpetrated. I, I guess why? Oh, actually, I do know the answer. Sorry. Okay, good. I go on tangents sometimes. That's okay. Remember walking around Greece back in early 2014, thinking if I were, you know, uh, breathing my last breath and I could have, there's anything I could have accomplished in the world, it's like, what if you could have ended this whole inflation scam? And if there's one single thing that could be solved that could increase, I mean, there's certainly a lot of things government's making harder for people, but just think if right. you pull away that printing press, <laughs> are we uh, suppressing foreign countries against their will, installing democracy with the force of a gun? Despite the fact that Benjamin democracy. Franklin and the Founding Fathers were very explicit that this was never designed to be a democracy, and yet now here it is, you're not a patriot unless you support sticking it up every other country. It's like, what? how many things would be stopped with... Oh my God, honest money? Press. Yeah, with honest money, how much would be stopped with honest money? I mean, what do we have? I think if you measure gold since the Fed was invented, and these are even with the manipulated prices, it's down to like a penny or two, right? Right. So you have everybody getting riled up fighting over health care and all this and that. Well, no wonder J.P. Morgan's eating 99% of the pie before we're, we're divvying the rest up. Exactly. And then you're taxing half of that. So I don't know. It's the average person walking around is getting half a percent of what they, their actual contribution Maybe. 
And then what's Skidmore, Dr. Mark Skidmore, he's up to 145 trillion. It used to be 21 trillion of missing money. Now it's 145 trillion. Can't audit Fort Knox. So God knows if we actually just did the simple fraction, because despite that Ben Bernanke doesn't understand gold, none of his friends do either. Right. I don't know. I kind of remember until FDR's little uh, trick that the dollar is backed by gold. And they even went back to it in Bretton Woods, yet then when it comes to decision time, I, this guy misremembers. This guy dropped it in the ocean and said three stooges routine. No, but now when I call and I present the evidence, nobody has any answer. They don't know who to train. I call JP Morgan and, or, and Goldman Sachs. Best relations. Hi, uh, I have these questions. Right, and you're uh, going to know who to call because you were in the industry. No, I just call their investor relations. Right, exactly. Okay. Investor relations. I have these questions. I don't know. I publicly accuse your guy, Jeff Curry, of fraud. I've submitted evidence. Do your lawyers want my contact information? I don't know how to reach them. Do you want... I don't know. I don't know. Does anybody in your institution know? Well, then maybe you guys shouldn't be offering your financial services. If you can't even figure out about silver drops 10%, on the greatest day of demand in history, then maybe you shouldn't be offering silver services. Maybe the You'd CFTC think. shouldn't be there. Here we're three months later. They can't even comment. I wrote the thing up. I had it in there in 10 days. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was reporting on it. In fact, oh, I mean, I don't know if this is bragging or not. I did an option webinar a couple of days before it happened. People can go back. I think it was posted Monday, February 1st. We did it Sunday the 31st as bullion dealers had gotten knocked offline because they right. sold, so, sold so much metal. And I said the Sunday night, I'm like, well, because this was when the price was going up, up, mm -hmm. up to $30, and I'm like, you know, it's going to go up. But be careful. They're, they're going to bring their Wrath of God paper drop, which sure right. enough they did. So, I mean, it wasn't like an insight beforehand. We're on the options expirations where I say, hey, here's the option board. Watch out because there's a very darn good chance that right is going to go right there. I'm sure I just keep getting lucky. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure, just uh, it, just uh, just luck with I'm a like, lot of experience to back it up. Yeah, although here's what I can't figure out. What? That to lie about the data. They said it was record setting. You set right. on the orders. Right. On the 28th, before this historic three-day period. I think the price uh, got above 26.50. Man, I made 25 or 27. But it was like, I think it was above 26.50. Then by February 2nd, at the end of this, historic buying that Ross Benham and the CFTC were afraid of. The banks were afraid of. They had to send Jeff Curry out to lie about. So after the greatest spree in history of silver buying, by the 2nd, the price was actually lower, lower. than 26.50. So if that doesn't raise the price of silver, what it what 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 does well, it take? Or else, it, all right, I should at least tell me. So I'll just sell call options at what the twenty eighth strike. I'll make a fortune because apparently there's nothing in this market <laughs> because and we know because Ross Benham confirmed that he communicates he, with Goldman Sachs, who helps him build a market structure that can tamp it down so that it doesn't blow up the, the fractional reserve Ponzi scheme, Ponzi scheme system doesn't blow up when people realize that. Although the last part is just, I think it's special that this scheme is on solid ground for the rest of time, as long as nobody ever talks about silver on social media ever again, which probably would have been easier if you hadn't just acknowledge and told all the people who are disgusted by what's happening that it was actually working and you had to lie to cover it up and you had to rig the data to cover it up but i mean you know i'm sure that's but a solid system. you know what happens to people and number and and also you guys should know the links to the interview you're referring to and the letter that you wrote are below or and also on our blog. So you definitely want to go see this. And Lynette, but, may I add that your lawyer might really want to see this too. Absolutely. Yeah. But you know, this is part of what gets people so frustrated. I get the question all the time. I'm sure you get the question all the time. Well, if they can do this forever, or can they do this forever? Or will they do this forever? Now, I know what my answer is. What's your answer? I don't know, I guess it depends. What are you, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> well, 
I, mean, I think uh, at some point when confidence is gone, because that's really what it is. If people believe Wall Street's tape, then they get discouraged. They'll go to other intangible assets that they're making go up, right? And they'll leave silver alone. They'll leave gold alone, and which is exactly what they want. Except that the level of confidence in these institutions, which people want to call traditional, they're not that traditional. They haven't been around that long. You know, gold and silver, traditional, they've been around for thousands of years as money. But at some point when the confidence is gone, they're going to have to pull it out. And they're going to say, but look, see, it's backed by this. And you know, that just reminded me of something. You know, my alma mater was Shearson. And when I first went to Shearson in the 80s, right? So all the globalization, all this stuff is happening. I'm watching it. Those were the days they were coming up with. That was the advent of the uh, security and the mortgage industry. Oh, my God. I'm so glad. And you could talk to the head of the trading desks then. I could call up the head of any trading desk and have a direct conversation. Did we ever in touch with the Liars Poker guys, like good friend and Meriwether? Uh... No, mostly um, arbitrage desk and, and definitely the currency desk. Um, but I remember when I first got there, they just kept pumping you in the training with the reason why people are doing business with you is because of Shearson. It's Shearson, it's Shearson, it's Shearson. Then things didn't work the way they wanted them to or they said they were going to work actually. And so their scheme blew up and got a lot of bad press and they were on the horn going, people are doing business with you with you. Call your clients, call your clients. It's all about you, right? So that kind of makes you wonder about what the truth is. And it really is all about the individuals. And when you ask the question, why could I see it? Why could you see it? And the guy next to you couldn't see it. They didn't want to see it because it was, you know, it was too lucrative for them to not see it. And it takes a certain personality and a certain temperament. You know, I mean, it really does take a sociopath to be at the levels where they know that they are having a negative impact on a lot of people and they just don't care. Yes. And I think that's a key part of it because a lot of people are trying to understand this through a rational lens. You're dealing and you with people can't. who aren't. As you remember, it's my guess. I don't, I'll bet, I'd say I think it's even possible all the stuff I've written or pointed out. If you told me these guys when I was the first clue who I am, and that all they're thinking is like, all right, as long as we get our next bonus, blows up the next guy's watch, I would have to guess that's right. What's happening? Although when I said my smart ass, well, it depends what, what are you gonna do about it. I wasn't saying that. What are you gonna do about it? Like, hey, we're all fucked. Which I know is the impression, that's not an accident that people are left feeling that way. Exactly. I said in the sense that asking anybody watching, what do you want to do about it? Right. Which can be different for each person. Hey, maybe maybe it could be just saying, holy Christ, I'm going to pull my money out of this bank because this doesn't sound safe. Or maybe someone else, you know, you see people like us talking and you share the video. Or you... Or you but I mean, when you're running a Ponzi scheme, and that's a very vulnerable area. It is. It doesn't take, with all the leverage, I don't think it's going to take a whole lot for this to come tumbling down. And I would say perhaps the idea of people feeling powerless, not just in finance, this government has encouraged everyone so that in any area of life, it's just all, it's like heroin here, heroin there. They call right. it finance, health care, but it's trying to get you hooked so you feel powerless. So that people and you don't become have dependent. any true idea right. of their true sovereign power. But it's like you see when people get in tricky situations and the adrenaline kicks up. They come in with these. That's how humans were designed. Right. We have this whole instinct, but hey, we were trained to stay safe and stay in line. But hey, you don't have to go out be commando or anything. But hit the share button if something resonates. You're like, oh my God. Or if you see that, you know, I don't know, if you read the, the file that, that, that I wrote to Benham and you're like, 
yeah, how come this guy is taking exactly. our tax money? I think their budget like, requested $304 million in 2020. Well, it's, it gets expensive to manipulate. And the more you manipulate, the more you have to manipulate. And so it just keeps getting more and more expensive. And, of course, the dollar buys less and less. <laughs> yeah, and plus, the today's news, this was a whopper. Their whistleblower program now is on the verge of bankruptcy. You're not going to believe this. Oh, no, because you didn't get paid out. <laughs> for the guy, I guess there was a... Because they, they're worried they might have to pay a former Deutsche Bank executive so much because he reported LIBOR. Oh, my God. And they do it on a percentage, and they're like, whoa, we might have to pay this guy $100 million. The guy whose bank was part of it. But here's what I don't get. They're saying that the way it's set up is that when there's a crime, a certain percentage of that goes to the award. They're like, if we pay this guy's money, then we won't be have money left. I'm like, wait, if you have, wait. here's the fine. You took right. X percent. Are they How running a pon Is the CFTC running a Ponzi <gasps> scheme with no. even their whistleblower program? No, I can't imagine that. We're the government and we're here to help. So when people, what, what are they going to do? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I guess it's up to each person. I certainly don't advocate anything other than uh, peaceful Peace, or right. you know, within the laws. Please don't hurt anyone physically. But, gee, if you have a financial advisor, if you have anyone, show them, ask them, call Ask JP them the Morgan. questions. Ask them for questions. Right. There's a growing amount of attention. Or if you see a meme that's funny. So, Lynette, sociopaths do not have a response to human emotion or right. especially when they're being humiliated i think it's pretty funny because i think what's going to take this down is people making videos of jamie diamond being the bad guy in the matrix stuff like that where they're being humiliated right now they're being humiliated publicly and they can't say anything their choice is to give out more evidence that can be used against them or keep their mouth shut like they've done so far and hey all right you know you saw that metal allegedly going to slv it's been coming right out and goes into pslv and there's going to be some day, I don't, it could be the next share. Maybe the next, maybe the one ounce away. Exactly. I don't know if it had a thing jump while we were talking. Or, you know, hey, I'm, I'm sure for the people who are saying like, hey, I'm tired of waiting, you know. I, I you're know. Lo you're looking at the devil's final death. Look at all the things. So, I mean, it's going to fight to the death to maintain its power. And it's going to get more and more aggressive as it gets closer and closer to the end. Desperate governments, def, def, desperate agencies do desperate things. And that's really what's happening. But they don't do it forever. They do it longer than you could possibly imagine. They can get away because they have the power of pushing a button and creating an unlimited amount of fiat money. You can't do that with silver. You can't do that with gold. But they can't do it forever. And they are really close. We were talking about this. I, too, agree with you that I think we are very close to the end of this whole big Ponzi scheme. And you need to be as independent and self-sufficient as possible. You, you know, you're here on the farm. We haven't really done the tour of the farm yet. But, you know, I, I could live quite comfortably here, presuming there, there's not a lot of nasty stuff going on out there. But I don't have to worry about food water, energy security, barterability, wealth preservation, shelter, or community. And the whole in my personal, we were talking a little bit about this too, um, a year ago in March when the whole pandemic thing hit. The low inflation pandemic? Yeah, the low inflation pandemic. Oh, yeah, when that hit, you know, I realized, yeah, I, I'm more conservative than you are. But, uh, probably so. I'm older than you are, too, though. But that's when I realized... You really hit your 30s, Lynette. That's when the body starts slowing down a little bit, as I found out. Uh, um, yeah, the body does, but the brain never does. The brain never does. Well, if you join the CFTC or Goldman, <laughs> let's not rule it out. But I'll well, that's, stop or if you eat a lot of McDonald's, if you eat a lot of garbage that intentionally you take a lot of the drugs that they're telling you to take that yeah it does slow your brain it does fog your thinking and therefore you can't really respond you like, you see 
saying you better not have put any SLV <laughs> shares in my account. I did not. I promise I did not. I just give you good, wholesome food. And silver. So, it's and silver. They well, colloidal it. silver is really, it's a very high antibacterial. So, yeah, it's good for you. But physical gold and silver in your possession, too, enables you to take advantage. Sha! <laughs> wow, they're never quite this noisy, but they're not used to sitting out. They want you to get in the pond. They want, some silver, they want you to get in the pond. The <laughs> but what, what having that does is it enables you to have freedom. And that's really what people, I think, need to look at. If you don't have something that is completely outside of the system, when this whole house of cards fall, you are going to lose your freedom because desperate governments do desperate things. <laughs> yeah. That duck. I mean, it's, it really is that simple. So I'm going to encourage you to... Well, do you have, I'd like you to say anything that you want that we didn't cover today. What would you like the people, what would you like to leave them with, the message? Because there's opportunities in here as well, even with all the manipulation. Oh, absolutely. In fact, I would say, you know, this idea that we have, you know, people are like, well, if we have $100 silver, is that a world you want to live in? Give me a break. I mean, we had $50 silver in 2011. Nobody even knew about it. Gold crossed $2,000 last year, and people were just worried about their Tesla shares. Here's another one. How do I think this is going to end? Yeah. I mean, they're already talking about the cash settle, which is the way these contracts are actually worded. So you can have the banks rate you all the COMEX holders a $25 check. In fact, the higher the reset number, if you made gold 280000 silver 35000 you, the higher the number, the more debt you wipe out. And right. The banks are cash settling. There's no banks insolvency. They're only paying out the open loss. And if they have any silver, they actually make a profit. So I think we're headed somewhere along those lines. Although in the end, the idea: do we is do we have to be like every if that happened? You could have society carry on. Nobody would even know. Except all the silver bugs, we would have been on some island, we were up partying, and they wouldn't have to hear from us again. You could have everything roll on just the same. So the idea that, you know, this is the end of the world coming up, I mean, that's kind well, of like... Well, I don't think it's the end of the world. Told people, well, without the mafia to take, uh, shake you down for half of your stuff or more. So like you said, there's plenty of opportunity, and... You know, I know there's a lot of people that with the current economy aren't in the easiest, you know, if people are looking for jobs, but a lot of these mining, if you're listening to this and you find this interesting and you're, you're looking for something to do, mining companies, they're making a lot of money right now. There's tons of businesses in the metal space that are doing really well. There's, as someone, I, I, it took me a long while to get the entrepreneurial thing down. Now that I've made through that part, I have more projects that I have people to help right. with. Right. And I find, especially it's interesting with the way the unemployment and skewing the labor force went to Las Vegas, well, the cab drivers, they're home because they're making more. There's a lot of businesses that are having a hard time finding Hiring. labor. Mm -hmm. And if you're, if, if this is something that's interesting to you and you, you believe it makes sense, you're running, you know, I don't know, maybe this is, you know, you want to find a job within the gold and silver industry. If these things... If you're seeing this same reality, I mean, there's infinite places where help is needed or figure out your own, hey, I can, there's this issue and I can help here. Right. Or maybe it doesn't have to be involved in a working or, or, but whether you're investing or just, I would say that anybody who's getting this has an incredible informational advantage. Oh, and absolutely. And waiting for the government to tell you, do this, do that. For anyone who's ready to move past that, I mean, there, there's plenty to be done. If someone really is, is struggling financially but enjoys this and needs help, you can actually even email us at the, the Big Silver Short at ArcadiaEconomics.com. We've got to help several people who are interested in this, trying to do things. There's 
never been a better time to get involved in some manner because you can sit there and I know, I mean, hey, we've all been guilty of, you know, sitting there and being upset about the stuff that happens, but... Where you can do something about it, right? I mean, that's what, for me, that's what this is, this is about. You know, my favorite question is, how many times can you be lied to when you do not know the truth? A lot. And so this is about knowing the truth so that you get to make educated choices that actually support your best interest. What a concept. And I think another uh, thing I wish... Uh maybe I could help offer is that just the way we're trained to think of things, to be afraid to try or that, you know, maybe you don't get something on the first time. Huh. What if uh, Paul Revere and George Washington, at least if that story was actually how it went down, which who knows at this point, but I mean, I don't know. I'm sure the British didn't say, Hey, uh, just press this button and we'll go away. Any situation is like that before right. it's solved. So, yeah, I mean, it's like, of course, well, the bankers tell you, oh, you can never beat us. We are all, well, if everyone sits there and says, no, if you had said, oh, it's too hard, I'll go do something else. If right. I had said that, if Bill Murphy, if Chris Powell, all the guys, if everybody had said that, yeah, then it won't end. Right. But now we have, what is Wall Street Silver is up to 70,000 people. I'm making videos. You're making videos. There's other. There's a lot of that's people. That's what right. will end it. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I guess that's a good note to end on. I'm so glad Chris Marcus, Arcadia Economics, um, really support this man's fight with the CFTC. Go watch those videos. It'll blow your mind. Listen to those interviews. It'll blow your mind. I mean, hiding in plain sight. So thank you for joining us today. I hope you've enjoyed the very noisy ducks and the babies. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> So you got that on film, you know. I used to think in the beginning that they were, you know, pack animals because domestic ducks are. They hang together. No, these are wild mallards. No, no. When they claim a pond, they claim a pond. Yep. So it's been very interesting. I hope you guys have enjoyed a little bit more of the shenanigans. And until tomorrow, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.